Today I'm going to upgrade and replace my current dryer sensors in an attempt to get better and more reliable voice notifications in Home Assistant. Your clothes are dry. Whoop whoop. Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. As I mentioned in my previous video, it's now time for me to go back and look at doing some improvements or some fixes to some of my prior projects. And this is one of those projects. And it happens to be one of the earliest automations that I did, but yet it's still one of the most important for the wife approval factor. And that is my washer and dryer notifications. Now the washer notifications have been working fine for over three years. It just simply uses a smart plug to report wattage and that is used in the automations to know when the washer starts and finishes. The dryer, however, presents some unique challenges because it runs off of 220 and you can't use a simple smart plug. I was also under a strict moratorium that I was not allowed to take the dryer apart. So things like CT clamps or tapping into the DC voltage on the control panel were off limits. Now, I'm not going to cover the full automation and ESP home details here because you can see that in the previous video. I'm just going to show the changes that I need to make for this new sensor. So be sure to check the video description for more information, including any parts that I use and links to that prior video. Since I was strictly prohibited from tearing anything apart on the dryer, what I opted to do was make use of these indicator lights on the front panel. That top sensing light always comes on anytime the dryer starts and the cycle complete light comes on anytime that the dryer is finished. So I thought I could use something like a photoresistor and the analog pin on a D1 Mini. I could determine when these lights turn on and turn off and use that in my automations. Now, before you go down to the comments and mention something like vibration sensors, I do talk about that in the original video, but with my front loading washer next to that, when it goes through the spin cycle, creates so much vibration, it would have affected any kind of vibration sensor on the dryer. Now these work great at the beginning. There's enough of a voltage variance to easily be able to tell when the lights turn on and turn off. But what I found is that over time, that voltage variance starts to drift and change, which means I either have to update my automations continuously to account for that, or the notifications don't work, which doesn't lead to a very good approval factor. You can actually see that here. Currently, that top one is the top LED light when it turns on, and you can see I'm getting a variance of all the way up to around 2.5 volts when the LED is on, and down near zero when it's off. Those little tiny spikes you see are probably a little bit of bleed over from when the light in the laundry room is turned on and off. But look at that bottom one. Right now I'm getting a straight 3.3 volts. I'm seeing no variance whatsoever. That means that the photoresistor is not providing any resistance whatsoever and everything is passing straight through. I don't think that photoresistors are supposed to lose their sensitivity over time. I could easily rebuild that exactly like it was before and it would function perfectly just like that top indicator for a while. But instead of rebuilding this yet a third time and having to rebuild it again down the road, I'm going to try to use a different type of sensor. This is one of two of the original dryer sensors. Now simply double-sided tape to mount and hold this photo resistor right over that indicator light. And it's really very simple inside. Again, it is just a photo resistor with a 10K resistor that's connected to 3.3 volts ground and the analog pin. But of course, the issue here is it's very inconsistent results on that analog pin. In the case of this one, it's just showing a consistent 3.3 volts, which really makes no sense. So I'm not sure whether being exposed to moisture from the dryer or what is causing the issue with these being inconsistent and eventually failing over time. So what I plan on doing is replacing this original sensor and getting rid of the standard photoresistor that I'm using here and no longer using the analog pin here on the D1 Mini. I think that's a lot of my problems. Instead, we're going to replace it with an integrated circuit that has a light intensity sensor. What I'm going to use is the BH1750. This is a 16-bit integrated circuit with an onboard illuminance to digital converter, so it'll report actual lux values anywhere from zero to just over 65,000. And this particular one is mounted on a GY302 breakout board. And as we can see here, we have our VCC and ground. This will operate off of 3.3 or 5 volts. And we can see here, this is an I squared C device. It has our data and our clock. It also has an address pin, which means we can have one of two addresses on this, depending on whether we pull the address pin to ground, which is the default, or bring it up to our VCC of 3.3 or 5 volts. Now that means theoretically, 
I could run two of these off of a single D1 Mini. Right now I have two separate D1 Minis because the D1 Mini only has a single analog pin, so I couldn't run two photoresistors. So I do have the option of dropping down to one D1 Mini with two of these sensors for my two indicator lights. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not because obviously I'm going to have to redesign this enclosure because I need to expose this sensor right over those indicator lights while trying to block out some additional ambient light. So I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use one D1 Mini and two sensors or maintain two separate D1 Minis like I currently have. So this is the initial redesign I've come up with so far. And this is the original with the photoresistor. And what I've done is just slotted a space in here for the uh, GY302 board. And on the back side, centered a hole right over the uh, BH1750 sensor. This part is a little bit bigger. I'm not sure how thrilled I am with that, but it's the best I've got at this point. It's at least what I'm going to go with. Now, the other thing, probably can't see it here on the camera. I use some different white filament uh, as opposed to the original. And it's definitely more translucent than this one is. So it's going to let, let a little bit more light through. But I'm going to do a bench test here next and see whether any kind of ambient light is causing problems with this reading. But this will be wired directly to the D1 Mini, which again will drop right in here. This is actually the same exact size, so the original lid will still work. So that will drop right in there on top of the wiring. And I should be able to swap these out and, of course, change my ESP home code. And before you say anything, yes, I know I'd be much better off going with a black enclosure. Uh, would have definitely blocked a lot more of the ambient light but again i have to go with the uh, wife acceptance factor or the wife approval factor and i don't think that the black enclosure is going to go over near as well as the white one that's the game plan but first i need to do a bench test for this particular sensor i've created a very basic breadboard test here this is my light sensor and it is connected to the d1 mini with i squared c so that means i'm using d1 and d2 for clock and data I'm connected to the 3.3 volts and ground right off of the D1 Mini. I don't have anything connected to the address pin. So that means it's going to default to OX23 for the I squared C address. And separately, I've just hooked up a little LED here that I can control with a button. That will simulate the dryer indicator. So I just want to see at this point what kind of readings we're going to get. I have very simple uh, ESP home sketch loaded here. All I'm really doing is just defining that sensor. I have it marked as internal because I don't necessarily want these values going to home assistant. I'm going to create a binary sensor for now just to be able to see the readings. That is the simple ESP home code that is loaded. So let's fire up the ESP home logs and take a look to see what kind of readings we're getting. Okay, I've got the ESP home log running up there and you can see it is reporting Lux values. And it seems to be pretty pretty stable at this point, right around 216, 215, somewhere around there. And I do have a little bit of light shining on this. It's a fair amount of light. Let me just cover this up first and see if it drops. And it does. In fact, it drops down to almost zero, which is good. But what I really want to know is, can it detect this LED or is it to give enough of a difference even with all this ambient light? So let me put this right over the sensor. Let that stabilize a little bit because I moved my hand and blocked some of the light. Okay, so we're sitting right around 220, 221. If I turn the LED on, yeah, it jumps all the way up to, to 2600. Turn the light back off, it drops down to 221, right back on. So that is a significant difference that it's able to detect, even with all the ambient light and not being in an enclosure. I have wired the light sensor to the D1 Mini, and I still have my sensor centered over this hole. So everything there is all connected. So I'm going to connect the power back up. We'll bring up the ESP home logs again and do a final bench test. All right, we're powered up and the log is running. You can see we're getting very low Lux values around 0.67. It's very stable with this thing face down. If I raise it up just a little bit, you can see that that's already going to jump. And these lights are significantly brighter than what I have in the laundry room. So I'm not real worried about bleed over. Let me go ahead and turn these lights down a little bit. Okay, and you can see now I'm actually down to showing zero lux. So again, let's test with our LED here. So I'm going to raise that up. We're going to get a little bit of light bleed through, but still not bad. But I'm going to try to put this like it would be on the dryer right over that LED. And when we turn that on, you can see we're getting a significant jump. Seeing values will even go up to 1,000 if I get it positioned right. Turn it back off. And the level's dropping all the way back down to five. So there's definitely a significant enough difference there to use this on an automation. So at this point, I consider it a successful bench test. I need to build a second one. 
install them, and then update my ESP home code. I finished building and bench testing the second sensor, so I now have a start and an end cycle sensor. But before I actually install these, I want to go ahead and take a look at the ESP home code. And I can use my little LED here to simulate a dryer cycle without having to actually wait on the dryer. So we can see how it works in Home Assistant and how the automations work as well. I've made a number of changes here from my initial bench test, and I'm just going to go over the highlights here. If you want to know a little bit more detail about this ESP Home YAML file, including a full copy of this and the Home Assistant automations that I use, check out the video description. There'll be a link to a written guide that will have a lot more information. But I'm creating a virtual binary sensor, and that binary sensor is going to be on or off based on whether the measured lux value from my sensor is above or below a certain threshold. That way I've got a simple on off that I can deal with and I don't have to worry about a particular lux level. Now that threshold is being set by importing an input number helper from Home Assistant. That way I'll have an easy slider that I can move to adjust whatever that threshold for the light level is without the need to reflash ESP Home to the device or update any automations. And this is the actual sensor itself. It's pretty much the same. I do have it set to internal true, which means it's not going to report out to Home Assistant. I really don't care about what the light level is and I don't need it spamming my logs. And yes, I know I could go out and I could omit it from the recorder or from the logs. I just opted not to export this to Home Assistant. If I really want to know the light level, I can open up the ESP Home logs and look at them. This part of the Lambda down here is what's actually going to set that binary sensor to on or off based on whether the measured lux from the sensor is above or below the threshold that I set. Then I just include a couple of standard things down here. I, I have a reboot time that lets me know the last time the sensor rebooted and I add a button so that I can actually reboot it remotely without having to power cycle the device if necessary. So I made those changes to both of my sensors and here are the entities that I get in Home Assistant. Again, you can see those top two are those binary indicators, and currently both of them are off. Then the next two are the buttons to be able to do a reset or a reboot of those devices. They show unknown now because I haven't pressed them. And of course, the last two are the last time that either device was rebooted. And these are the two input number helpers that I created. That's that threshold for above or below a lux value to indicate whether it's on or off. Right now, I have them both set at 100. So let's take a look at this in a Home Assistant dashboard and see how the automations work. I've created a really simple Home Assistant dashboard here just so we can see how the system works. Here at the top, I've just got a couple of indicators. It's again tied to those binary sensors to let us know whether the light is on or off for those two indicators. This is that threshold level that I can set that when it's above or below a certain lux value is going to trigger those binary sensors. Here I'm showing the status. These are identical. I'm just showing it in two different ways. This is a standard entity card and this is a custom button card. And then I've got a timer and a reset down here and I'll talk about those in just a second. So now I wanna go ahead and use my little LED here to simulate the dryer going through a cycle. Right now, both of them are indicating off with a lux level of 100. These are measuring less than 100 lux. It's quite a bit of ambient light. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this up to 200 for both of them just to make sure we stay above the ambient light. With those new thresholds set, I'm gonna go ahead and take my little LED here, and I'm going to simulate the first LED coming on on the dryer. Okay, you see that that has now come on, and the state of the dryer is now showing as drying. Now, in my particular case, this light is going to turn back off again as the other lights light up throughout the cycle. And that's part of the reason for this timer, which again, I'll come back to in just a second. But let's see what happens when that end light does come on saying that the cycle is complete. So we will now simulate that. Your clothes are dry. Whoop, whoop. You heard the voice announcement and you can see the dryer state now says finished. Now this particular LED remains on until someone opens the dryer door. When the dryer door gets open, that light turns off and the state of the dryer goes back to idle. Now that timer is there. Let me restart the cycle. Okay, we're back into a drying state. Now, once again, the LEDs on the dryer itself are gonna start moving down the row. But if someone actually stops the dryer before the cycle completes, that end cycle light's never going to come on and it's gonna remain in the state of drying. So I have a timer down here that says if an hour expires, which is longer than the longest dryer cycle, without the end cycle light ever coming on, just reset the state back to idle because somebody stopped the dryer. 
And that's the same thing that this button simulates. If this hour were to expire, it's going to set that back to the state of idle. So that way it covers a situation if someone actually stops the dryer before the end cycle indicator ever lights up. I'm happy to report that after a couple of months of use, the new sensors do seem very reliable and stable. If any of that changes over time, I'll be sure to leave a note down in the video description. But for now, I've definitely restored my wife approval points that I lost when the dryer notification stopped. This is the first of a number of videos I may be making over the next few months where I go back and revisit and try to improve some of my prior projects. I'll still be releasing new content in the meantime, but occasionally you may see an update video as well. Until that time, I would like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.